Trade wars are easy to win, wrote Donald Trump in a tweet in March 2018, shortly before launching the first round of tariffs on goods from China. But, for all Mr. Trump's bravado, data paint an increasingly bleak picture of the trade war's impact on the U.S. economy. The impact of this trade war and the opportunities lost by American businesses, both large and small, can not only be tracked by the public earnings reports but through American exports. And a deal, no matter what is agreed on, would never make up for the losses sustained during this trade war, according to calculations based on the decrease in volumes of containers, cargo, and tankers that traveled into U.S. ports. In fact, the U.S. Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index has been below the 50-point mark separating contraction from expansion since August, while the conventional counterpart from China's Statistics Bureau shows a smaller fall in manufacturing activity and far greater resilience over the long term. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. There's been a lot of optimism about the Phase 1 trade deal over the last couple of weeks. Stocks have surged on the news of a possible deal. Meanwhile, gold and silver have dipped. Peter Schiff appeared on RT Boom Bust and said the optimism is misplaced. The US is losing the trade war in China. I've said from the beginning that there will be no substantive trade deal reached with China. In fact, we're not even talking about a real trade deal anymore. We're just talking about phase one. And phase one is basically nothing. And I think what the Chinese basically want, to agree to nothing, is for all the tariffs to roll back, so we return to the status quo that existed before the trade war began. Meanwhile, Walgreens may get scooped up in the most significant private equity leveraged buyout in history. Peter said there had been a lot of private equity deals in the era of cheap money. You know, even though interest rates have moved up a bit, what, we have 1.5% Fed funds, we have an inflation rate well in excess of 2% per year, even the way government measures it. So, with all of this cheap money around, there's a lot of deals that are being done. But if the Fed were to allow interest rates to rise to a reasonable level, a lot of these deals would not be done, and I think the economy would be restructuring in a much healthier way. Instead, we're continuing to inflate a bubble, and we're propping up companies that would be better off going through a bankruptcy. Peter said that if the deal is financed by going deeply into debt, it will likely be problematic when the Federal Reserve loses control of interest rates, and rates ultimately rise in the midst of a severe recession. Peter also talked about the prices of gold and silver. The real driver behind the rise in the price of gold is central banks, not only the Federal Reserve but central banks around the world. He said there was some profit taking last week based on false optimism about a trade deal that isn't going to happen. Peter reiterated that any deal wouldn't fundamentally change the dynamics between the US and China. Interest rates also rose some last week, particularly on the long end of the curve. That also put selling pressure on precious metals. But ultimately, I think the reason that interest rates are rising is that inflation pressures are rising in the economy and because there's not enough demand for all the bonds being sold. All of this is very bullish for gold, and so rather than merely selling bonds, people should be buying gold, because they need to get out of the dollar. In fact, they need to get out of fiat currencies in general and seek a real safe haven, and that's gold. As far as the trade deal goes, Peter said he's confident that Trump will make lemonade out of whatever lemons we end up with. He'll talk about it as if it's a victory, just like he spoke about the USMCA, which was simply NAFTA with a worse name. So, he'll claim this was a great deal even if absolutely nothing is accomplished. China's is a manufacturing economy, and a manufacturing economy will always beat out a service-based economy like the one we have in the US. It's only a matter of time before China becomes the dominant economy of the world. China's vast and ever-growing middle class already puts the US middle class to shame. Most of the US's middle class is living paycheck to paycheck while the Chinese middle class has plenty of money to vacation abroad if they choose to, and some even come to the US to buy houses. I am an American, but I have lived in Asia for a few years until recently, and I've seen the shift in prosperity the Chinese middle class has. There simply is no comparison between the Chinese and the Americans. While the average American is struggling and having to downsize, the average Chinese are getting wealthier and wealthier with no end in sight. Economist Jim Rogers is right when he says, the 21st century belongs to China. I am not sure that China has even felt the trade war. China has more than a billion people. Or roughly three times the consumer base of the United States. 
It has an increasingly more equitable wealth distribution average and has quite famously brought as many people as the US has in total, up into the middle income bracket in just 30 odd years. Most of China's trade is internal. They are buying and selling to themselves. They import what they don't have and what they don't manufacture. They manufacture almost everything. Maybe 12% of Chinese exports go to the United States. So tariffs as a powerful mechanism are inherently doomed to fail. China could simply replace much of that trade by expanding into new developing markets. Doing that would still leave 85% of their economy unfazed. The goal of China is to increase labor participation and worker pay. That is viewed as the most crucial element to national security. Their ultimate goal is self-sufficiency. China's most significant products are consumer-based. China has a plan to boost its high-tech industries by 2025. By blacklisting these Chinese companies and that Chinese companies from doing business with US companies, Donald Trump has scared the Chinese companies to become self-sufficient in high-tech or buy them from somewhere else. China could not have better help than Donald Trump to get its 2025 plan working faster. Look at the slump in US semiconductors that Trump has caused with blacklisting US tech from sales to China. He is killing the semiconductor industry. Texas Instruments kill. China makes 90% of all air conditioners. 87% of all hand and power tools, 94% of all computers and servers. 98% of all modems. Etc. The list is endless. Trump destroyed all those semiconductor contracts through force majeure. He demolished these companies, not just short term but permanent damage. Huawei has replaced all US components in its 5G hardware. They are now using Alibaba RISC vCPUs developed by artificial intelligence, and all open source. This is a giant new competitor for Intel and the most prominent Asian markets. What was the purpose of stopping Intel sales by Trump? To create a giant Intel competitor? Mr. Low Tech does it again. So now China has the core competency to make its own CPU chips, all open source that can be modified by AI. That will eventually end Intel's market share in Asia. The Chinese are not stopping here. They have more chips in the AI pipeline. What has happened and Trump was warned in writing by 3,000 economists and 14 Nobel laureates that the nations of the world and multinationals would offload any and all dependence on U.S. products and cost the U.S. the large Asian markets of the future since U.S. products would be shunned globally. Antagonism of trade partners doesn't work, especially Asians. How Trump could imagine insulting Asians as intelligent is beyond comprehension. The good news is the U.S. population gets it. Trump's disapproval is now 59%, and 55% want Trump removed from office, not merely impeached. There is no trade deal possible with anyone that will erase the bad blood of Trump attacking other nation traders and global businesses. If Trump was allowed to try to destroy Huawei USA, then he could go after anyone, and he has. Look at the damage Trump has done to Harley Davidson for political reasons. That is why Trump and now any US president is too dangerous to trust. The mechanics of tariffs were established in 1964 when Congress delegated that power to LBJ to place tariffs on nations trading with then North Vietnam. Trump has abused that power and applied Section 232 tariffs against allies as well as fierce competitors. How can frozen herring from China be of a national security interest? China doesn't even export herring. This is a grotesque abuse of power, and it has permanently destroyed global markets for US products. The US exports are down 18% globally under the big businessman. Market like soy is gone forever. China has replaced all its required soy with Argentina, Brazil, Russia, and Ukraine. In 2018 the US produced 109 million metric tons of soy. In 2019 they are down to 34 million metric tons not enough to export. Argentina alone grows twice as much as the USA. It's over. The U.S. soy export market will never recover. It is gone from the USA forever. Look at Apple and GM. These products are shunned now by Asians. Asians are buying Huawei and Xiaomi. Trump threatened to blacklist Microsoft and Android. China and Korea and Japanese smartphone makers have replacement open source operating systems available. The Chinese military dumped Microsoft in favor of Linux and NU. 
The Chinese and Europeans and all of Asia will never be dependent on U.S. products again. Trump's Asian racism and his utter stupidity have destroyed the very best U.S. competitors. Section 232 tariffs must be repealed. The U.S. Constitution gave Congress exclusive control over commerce to prevent this very nightmare of a single nutty politician destroying U.S. trade. The Congress was never allowed to delegate that power under the Constitution to the exec branch. This destroyed the balance of power. To a great extent, the Republican Congress has been held hostage by Trump over Section 232 tariffs. And the Democrats can blame themselves for the 232 legislation passed in 1964. Democrats set the seeds of disaster. The disaster came in the form of Trump, a pretend Republican with excessively low intellect. So it is not coming back. The U.S. is condemned now and forever to be a marginal supplier whose importance will continue to diminish as Asia grows. Try to remember these critical debt-to-GDP numbers. Debt-to-GDP